Welcome to the Brief News Brief, hosted by the Life Given Radio channel. I'm your host, Isaac Lopez. Um, I have to be honest, I am experiencing a strong case of the yawns this morning, so I apologize if I kind of come through a little sleepy and not uh, uh, not quick on my feet. Uh, I do have five stories for you today, and before we get to the main slew of them uh, that I would like to make a general comment about and tie it uh, tie it up in a nice little bow for you. Um, I do have a story that I wanted to share with you because it kind of shows the um, lack of logic in our society today. Uh, according to this article from Post Crescent, a man was finally caught in 2017 after being on the run for 10 years from the law. So a few years ago, he was finally arrested. Um, what was he on the run for, you might ask? That's a good question. He was accused of slipping his then-girlfriend abortion pills when they, were, when they found out that they were pregnant. He tried to put him put pills in her drink. The scheme didn't work, thankfully, and the man went on the run from the law after that. He was recently, just recently, I think this was early October, uh, recently convicted and put into jail for 22 years on account of first degree intentional homicide. Now this is based off the assumption that the child, that the, the in air quotes, the fetus is a child, um, which, you know, are, um, which makes sense and we should celebrate that that some form of justice was served in this situation. Uh, but women not only attempt to do this action, uh, but they do it by the thousands every day and are celebrated. Um, we have reached maximum confusion in our society today. Now, I want to get to uh, the next set of stories that uh, really um, I will kind of wrap it up by talking about the definition of one term. And I think we are seeing the um, just what happens when you uh, perp uh, perpetuate or perpetrate this kind of term onto an entire civilization. So we have Senator Hirono at it again. Um, when uh, we talked about her last week and her uh, questions about sexual harassment that she posed to uh, Judge Amy Coney Barrett, and now she's back at it again, talking about sexual preference. And the good judge used sexual preference um, in response to a question uh, sir, uh, that we will that will be made clear in this quote. Uh, and Senator Hirono said, "Quotes. Let me make clear: sexual preference is an offensive and outdated term." Hirono said, "It is used by the anti." anti LGBTQ activists to suggest the sexual that sexual orientation is a choice. It is not. Sexual orientation is a key part of a person's identity. So if it is your view that sexual orientation is merely a preference, as you noted, then the LGBTQ community should be rightly concerned whether you will uphold their constitutional right to marry. Now, I don't even want to delve into the Q&A, the response between uh, the judge and the senator here. What happened after this was what was fascinating um, and just kind of uh, just a lack of self-awareness on uh, the part of Webster's Dictionary. Uh, Webster's Dictionary went into its online uh, sites and changed um, and updated rather the uh, term preference. So if you go and look up the term preference on Webster's Dictionary, now you will see, uh, I think like the fifth option is noting the term is offensive when used in the sense of sexual preferences. Now this is a report that came from the Blaze. It said that it updated right after, just, just after this Q&A, this dialogue on national television. Um, so the Webster's Dictionary says the term preference is used as used to refer to sexual orientation is widely considered offensive in its implied suggestion that a person can choose who they are sexually or romantically attracted to. So mainstream media going out of its way, bending over backwards, trying to keep up with its own ill logic. Um, 
and we have more of it. So uh, a recent expose bombshell story, however you want to put it, on Hunter Biden was dropped by the New York Post recently that uh, has that has revealing emails that ties the former Vice President Joe, Hunter Biden's father, to this uh, large company in the Ukraine. And um, a direct quote from the Post says, Hunter Biden introduced his father, then Vice President Joe Biden, to a top executive at a Ukrainian energy firm less than a year before the elder Biden pressured government officials in Ukraine into firing a prosecutor, prosecutor who was investigating the company, according to emails obtained by the Post. So Hunter Biden had been on this, uh, in quote, sorry, Hunter Biden had been on the board of this energy firm for almost a year at a salary of $50,000 a month. A memo that was revealed in a recent investigation shows a higher up thanking Hunter Biden for the introduction to his father. And quote, and the beginning of quote is, Dear Hunter, thank you for inviting me to DC and giving me an opportunity to meet your father and spent some time together. It's really an honor and pleasure, the email reads. So there's obviously a connection, and Joe Biden at a certain point in the debates denied having a connection to these, uh, to this Ukrainian company. Um, and uh, an earlier email from May 2014 also shows uh, Burismas, which is this uh, company's number three exec, asking Hunter for advice on how you could use your influence, in quotes, on the company's behalf. So no matter how you slice it, it's shady, right? Um, but this is just a story, right? This is just a report. This is not necessarily an indictment on Hunter Biden, although there are investigations going on right now, and there's more to this investigation if you want to follow the link um, and I will include in the description. Uh, but Twitter, and this, this is our third and fourth this is uh, our fourth story building from the one that we just talked about with Hunter Biden, but Twitter and Facebook have been at it again, trying to scrub all uh, evidence that this story ever existed, except they can't go in and delete the actual article on the New York Post website. So Twitter and Facebook trying to scrub uh, the story. They're trying to control the uh, dissemination of information, and they're doing their, their best to block it. But another report from uh, the New York Post came out and said that this actually, um, this reaction by Facebook and Twitter has had the opposite respects, uh, has had opposite um, uh, reaction, and more people have come to have flocked to their website to read about this as uh, the reaction, and this is a direct quote from the uh, article, the reaction on the social media platforms to this story was the second biggest topic last week, largely driven by criticism that the Silicon Valley giants were meddling in the election by practicing censorship. Now, there are multiple uh, subpoenas being issued. I think a lot of people are uh, trying to uh, get Facebook on the Twitter and, and Twitter on the hook for this um, and not let them off the hook. Uh, and we will see what comes from this, but this this really, uh, the last three stories um, can be summed up in the term gaslighting, which is uh, to attempt to make someone believe that he or she is going insane. And there have been a group of people or just um, big tech, how, whoever you want to say, um, that has made 2020 a large attempt to um, gaslight an entire civilization all of Western civilization, um, whether it's BLM, whether it's COVID, what, whatever it is, you know, maybe it's the Trump impeachment, they have made an attempt to falsify, sift, and control information that um, would allow America, that if they had this information, that if Americans had this information, all of it, they would be able to make informed decisions. But as it is, um, they have attempted to falsify, sift, and control it, making it making it very difficult for all Americans to come to anything other than just one decision on any given situation. So really only one conversation being allowed, and here's proof, more and more proof of that 
Um, and this is what happens. Okay, this final story is what happens when people have had enough. Now, I'm not uh, condoning this kind of violence or this kind of plan, um, but really, what else would you expect when you put an entire uh, group of people, an entire country through the ringer like you have since 2020, and honestly, since you know the early 2000s? A plot was recently discovered. Um, that sought to kidnap the sitting governor of Michigan, Gretchen Whitmer. The New York Times recounted it as those were among the plots, who were among the plots described by federal and state officials in Michigan on Thursday as they announced terrorism, conspiracy, and weapons charges against 13 men. At least six of them, officials said, had hatched a detailed plan to kidnap the governor, a Democrat who has become a focal point of anti government views and anger over coronavirus control measures. The seven men were said to be affiliated with an extremist group known as the Wolverine Watchmen, and the state's attorney general accused them of collecting addresses of police officers in order to to target them, threatening to start a civil war leading to a societal collapse and planning to kidnap the governor and other government officials, end quote. So obviously this is not the right reaction that we should have in this moment. Although I think we're probably closer to that moment than we would probably be comfortable acknowledging. Uh, These men, uh, I think, finally broke. They were at the end of their rope. And Michigan has been on the forefront of gaslighting, of the the crimes that the government has covered up. Um, I think one of the most... um, one of the worst is what has happened with their um, care homes there. And you should go and look, look that up there, senior, senior living home uh, homes and all of that. Uh, there, there is a story waiting to be covered there. And finally someone did, and that was uh, Stephen Crowder with Louder with Crowder. They had a recent protest uh, outside of Michigan State Capitol building. Um, and, and some of the statistics are just mind blowing. So go and look that up. It's pretty easy to find. Um, but this, this is honestly what happens uh, when, when people are being pushed and pushed and pushed to think a certain thing or to do a certain thing that goes against uh, what this country was founded on and what a lot of these people have been raised to believe in. And so obviously here's the result of of the gaslighting and then the article goes right back to it okay so uh miss whitmer and uh dana nessel the michigan attorney general went right back to trying to tie this extremist plot to comments from president trump and his refusal at the time so apparently president trump is responsible for this (laughs) like he made uh uh the uh, New York Times reported uh, that Ms. Whitmer said just last week, the president of the United States stood before the American people and refused to condemn white supremacists and hate groups like these two Michigan militia groups. Um, I'm, I can only assume that she's referring to uh, the comment Trump made um, that might have sounded like he didn't explicitly say, uh, I, I think the quote was, um, when asked, do you condemn white supremacy and these hate groups that are, you know, um, ravaging Kenosha and Portland, he said to stand down and stand by. But just 10 seconds prior to that, he said, sure, I would be fine doing that. And if you want really kind of like uh, just a breakdown of that, go and look at the Cut in the Dry episode one. Uh, Kip and I talk at length on that. Um, the The... New York Times, to their credit, did say there's no indication in the court documents that any of the men were inspired by the president. Um, But Ms. Whitmer did say that the extremists had heard the president's words, not as rebuke, but as a rallying cry. So just more, once again, just going out of their way to attribute this to the president. Um, And I, I just don't see what the benefit is at all. Um, I, I mean, I can maybe understand why they are doing it because they have an election to win, but um, it's it's really just a shame. And uh, I, I really am curious to know what you guys have to say on these stories. Uh, it really does seem like there is extreme amount of gaslighting 
uh, being purported, uh, being pushed by the media. Um, and you can reach out to me at the life given and received at gmail.com on Facebook at the life given news, or if you want to jump in the conversation as more and more podcasts get up and running on the life given radio, join the life given radio conversation on Facebook. And as always, uh, you can find us on Spotify, YouTube, uh, Apple Podcasts, Facebook Watch, uh, Google Podcasts, any, basically anywhere you listen to podcasts, the Life Given Radio will be there or will soon be on there. As always, remember that the life that you've been given and the life that you've received includes every area of life. Why should current events be the exception? God bless.